you so much for uh, joining me today. Yes, thank you, Blake. I'm happy to tell you more about us and what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, that would be great. Um, well, you've been involved with Hyperloop for a long time, um, but give us some background. Uh, who are you and, and who are you with right now and who do you represent? Yes. Well, I'm Tim. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hard Global Mobility. And we're like the first European company uh, developing the Hyperloop. Um, we first started with Hyperloop at the Elon Musk's Hyperloop competition. And with the Delft University of Technology team, we have won that competition. And with yeah, four of the founders of that team, we continued with our uh, company in actually realizing the Hyperloop. Uh, we arranged an investment from the Dutch Railways and another investment fund. Uh, we built Europe's first Hyperloop test facility together with the biggest construction company of the Netherlands. And now we're just rallying partners, uh, investors, government to uh, get this Hyperloop really off and running. Wow, that's really amazing. And as, as kind of one of the, the first uh, on the continent, um, it's, it's quite an accomplishment. Um, so how did, how did you, you personally hear about Hyperloop and how did that interest <laughs> you? What, what interests you in that? Yeah, well, it was in 2000, uh, I think it was 2012 when Elon Musk released his white paper. And at the time, I was part of the Formula student team of the TU Delft. It's a team building electric race cars. Uh, cool. They break world records with it. They do competitions all over the world. Um, and uh, the team, we were so competition driven that at the moment when Elon Musk released the white paper, we immediately said to each other, well, how nice would it be if there would come a high flu competition as well? Yep. And yeah, I don't know what happened, but maybe Elon Musk heard us and one and a half year later, he started this competition. So therefore, we didn't have to think very long in order to um, yeah, start a Delft Hyperloop team, think about a Hyperloop concept, mm -hmm. get a routine, and yeah, try to win this competition. So Tim, you're, you're really, really working hard on your tra test track right now, but if you could uh, develop a Hyperloop connection with um, anywhere on Earth, where would you want that? Yeah, so I think there are like tons of cities, tons of city pairs all over the world that could be connected with, uh, with a Hyperloop and it would be very, very beneficial for those, uh, for those cities. Yeah. But I don't think it's, it's really about connecting those city pairs, but it's more about connecting multiple cities as one Hyperloop network mm -hmm. over a whole continent, um, that you enter the cities with on and off ramps, so you can travel from point to point without any intermediate stops, and that you can travel like a whole continent is how you're now traveling in, in a big city with a metro. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I always have to step back and <laughs> look at the bigger picture a little bit um, of what it could mean in you know, a couple of years or decades time to connect all the continents. Um, so how, how will um, your work right now and um, this future system change your way of life in the future, do you think? What will be an impact for you? Yeah. So if you now look to um, how big the range is of people to go to in, let's say, 45 minutes to, to one hour, um, it's, it's actually quite limited because you just have the, yeah, the car, the train and uh, the high-speed rail. Um, and for the daily commute, if you want to spread a larger area to go to in the same amount of time, a totally different system of transportation is required. And that system, that can be the Hyperloop. So you can expand your region of living and working to a way, yeah, way larger area. Um, so you can live and work actually wherever you want. You are not limited by the, yeah, by the boundaries of distance anymore. Mm -hmm. So that will mean that you in future might get picked up by this autonomous driving car. This brings you to the Hyperloop station. You step in the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop brings you to yeah, cities multiple mm -hmm. hundreds of kilometers away. And at that station, you step out of the Hyperloop, get in the autonomous car, which brings you to your final destination. All yeah, very well integrated, uh, very well attached. And you just be there in no time. That's really cool. And it's, and I think that's a good explanation of kind of, uh, to people that have never heard about this Hyperloop or what it could mean for other uh, possibilities with other modes of transportation. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's really cool. So um, my final question, how, how, can, how can us uh, regular people support 
uh, your work and how can we learn more about you? And your yeah. work? That is a very nice question. I think the only way to get this hive loop really up and running is with support of yeah, many, many people that want to travel with it, that want to use it, that want to also make it a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now we are always looking for the yeah, for the best people to join our team and also for investors that can help us in order to yeah, expand our team, build a technology and make sure that this hive loop thing is, uh, is going to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, just go to our website, click on the contact uh, page and then fill in the form and uh, we're happy to get in touch with you. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Tim, uh, for taking the time out of your, your afternoon on a Tuesday. So, <laughs> And I, I really look forward to uh, following you in the future. All right. Well, Thanks. thank you, Blake. Yep. Thank you so much. <laughs>